All right. Hello, my friends. Welcome back. It's me. Good to see you. So, typically on this YouTube channel, I stick to covering bands who I, you know, grew up listening to and have already been getting what they're about, passionately listening to, and researching for fun for years already. Uh, however, in this video, I wanted to talk about a band who I have known about since probably 2008 or so, uh, and I've always known and enjoyed a song of theirs uh, called Love Addict. And I also unintentionally did watch uh, their entire set one time at a Warp Tour one summer uh, while I was waiting for <laughs> a different band to play on a different stage. Besides that, I've never known very much about this band at all, uh, and I had never really gotten into them. And in fact, you know, while I've never necessarily disliked them or anything, this band has simply always just really just confused the living heck out of me. Like, conceptually, uh, since all the way back when I first heard them, like, 15 years ago. The band in question, Atlanta Georgia's own, Family Force 5. My next guests are from Atlanta, and they redefine the, uh, the sound of Southern rock, for me, I think. They've got a new CD out, Business Up Front, Party in the Back. It's out now. Please welcome the wonderful Family Force 5, everybody! <laughs> So when I was in middle school, I was actively getting into bands with a similar, you know, dance pop, flashy, neon aesthetic, right? Like Cobra Starship and Forever the Sickest Kids. Naturally, uh, you know, being in the right place at the right time, I eventually stumbled across Family Force 5, whose logo and ridiculously goofy album cover led me to believe that I would love them as much as I was loving on, uh, you know, Cobra Starship uh, and similar artists. So, I listened to the song Love Addict, which was one of their bigger songs back then, and uh, while I did enjoy the energy of the song, and, uh, you know, I've always thought it was a lot of fun and definitely a banger, like I said, on a conceptual level, this band just never made a lick of sense to me. You guys have a pretty unique style of music. What genre would you say you guys are closest to? Party rock. Yeah, I'd just say like party rock. I mean, you could probably put us in like alternative. But uh, yeah, it's uh, coming out October 18th. Uh, we're super excited. Uh, it's a really honest record for us, and uh, it's uh, ghetto and redneck. It's uh, it's got some ATL swagger to it, so it's it's awesome. It's big beats and hip hop and and gold three wheelers on the front yeah. of the album cover, man. I mean, that's like that is who we are. Uh, so Family Force Five, right off the bat, they're a goofy, fun-loving, non-serious like jokey kind of band, right? They all go by silly nicknames like Soul Glow Activator. Uh, there's a guy called Chapstick. There's another guy called Crouton. <laughs> uh, I got mine from eating like this gangsta salad one time. Uh, my name's Crouton and I looked down at the Crouton and I was like, huh, that'd be funny, you know? And uh, now people know me as that, so take it or leave it, you know? It's funny, it's, I hate it. They are a Christian band, uh, and not many of their songs or lyrics uh, are super, like, on-the-nose Christian-based. They theoretically could pass as a secular act, uh, but they do make it known in interviews that they rock out in the name of the Lord. But man, God did that for us, and he sent his son, he broke his son, just for us. Man, that is so, so amazing. Yet such a crazy idea. So what we here in Family Force Five are thinking is like, well, if God is, he's obviously, he obviously loves us like crazy, and he had a crazy idea to send his son, then, then maybe we should act crazy for him. And maybe we should go all out and just do something crazy for him and live for him and just 
be beautiful in his eyes no matter what we are. Because we're broken people, man. We, make, we mess up all the time up here and stuff. We got scars and warts and all that kind of stuff in our lives. But, dude, God's grace covers all of that, man. And he's an amazing, amazing person. If you don't know him, I, re I recommend coming to know him, man. He's, he'll change your life. So I'm not here to preach to y'all. I'm here to uh, party with you guys and celebrate that I'm alive in Christ right now. So let's do that, all right? Now, personally, as a guy who comes from a non-religious family and never practiced religion or anything like that, Christian music has never been my thing. Uh, however, there were a ton of, like, vaguely Christian or at least Christian marketed bands playing on the Warp Tour when I was growing up, so it wasn't out of the ordinary for me to listen to bands who did identify as Christian. Um, Family Force 5, however, I have come to realize were rooted more and pushed a bit more into that Christian market than your average Warp Tour, you know, Christ Core kind of band, uh, which I realize now is kind of part of what caused the big disconnect between me and um, understanding Family Force 5, but a little bit more on that later. But the real confusing thing about this band for me was always kind of just their music, and really just their whole shtick, you know, their style is, and I still stand by this in 2024, uh, is incomparable to any other one band. For better or for worse, there is truly only one Family Force 5. When I hit play on Love Addict back when I was in middle school, I was expecting something more in the Cobra Starship, Forever the Sickest Kids uh, realm. Uh, but instead of, you know, your typical electro scene music, which, you know, has a lot of ties to pop punk and, you know, even post hardcore, the, you know, the big emo pop stuff that was going on, uh, instead of that, when I pressed play on Love Addict, I got a unique combination of uh, butt rock, <laughs> you know, 2000s kind of post-grunge, like, southern radio rock uh, meets, like, a Beastie Boys-esque white suburban party rap vibe, a hint of, like, Lil Jon, Yin Yang Twins-esque southern uh, crunk, like, club music, 80s pop synthesizers, uh, and I guess enough of a melodic sense for it to be, uh, you know, uh, and, and a, you know, kind of uh, scene hair aesthetic for it to, you know, be able to be marketed to Warped Tour emo kids like myself. Uh, but, you know, all of what I just described, which came out of my speakers when I first tried to listen to this band, was uh, not what I was expecting at all. It did not compute at all. It was fun, and it was a banger, but to this day, I just have never understood. I was like, what is this? Who, how did, how did we get here? You know, not even in a bad way, just how did, like, how does this conceptually come to exist? Christian electro butt rock? <laughs> how did we get here, right? How do you come up with an idea like that and execute it to this degree? You know what I mean? Like, I was thinking about it, and I feel like at the time, back in 2008, like, um, you know, uh, like, if you think about uh, bands who exist in, you know, the realm of ridiculousness, Broken Side even seemed to make more conceptual sense to me than Family Force 5. But, my friends, recently, and by recently, I mean literally like a few weeks ago, um, I smoked maybe a little bit too much marijuana, and... <laughs> 
I decided to finally give Family Force 5's debut album, uh, the 2005 release Business Up Front, Party in the Back, which is an incredible album title, by the way, uh, a full listen all the way through from a very open mind. Now, you know, I'll be honest, it might have just been the weed, but for whatever reason, I was at the perfect level, the perfect headspace to really accept and understand, finally, the magic of Family Force 5. And, um, you know, I think I said this a, a while back, it was kind of a similar thing if you watch my video about uh, me discovering and now enjoying Maroon 5, it was a similar thing where I got high, I started washing the dishes, and I put on Maroon 5 and it, like, I was like, oh, I get this now. Same thing happened with Family Force 5. Um, I was doing the dishes, I let the album play, and like the it just like it exposed itself to me and absolutely blew my fucking mind. This Family Force Five album did. I turned it up in my headphones, and I was thinking to myself, "This might just be the craziest thing I've ever freaking listened to." Every song, just when you think it can't get any more nuts, it just gets crazier <laughs> the more the album plays. This is Crouton. I'm just making sure that you keep it C-R-U-N-K in the USA. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Regardless, since about a, you know, a few weeks ago when marijuana helped me open my mind to the magic of Family Force 5, I have begun to peel back the onion and uh, do my research on this band, on their story, and find out exactly how in the world a band as conceptually bonkers as Family Force 5 uh, comes to exist in the first place. And in my research on their past and where they came from, it really does add a whole lot of necessary context to the band and has helped me understand them a lot more and has helped me also understand where the disconnect uh, has lied for so many years, like I said, between me and understanding Family Force 5. And their history is also like just as humorous and bizarre as you would expect it to be, maybe even more so. So if you'd allow me, my friends, I'd love to share with you some of my findings on the surprising history of Family Force 5. Let's do it. You know, Family Force 5 has created a, like a new genre. I mean, you guys, you know, you know it's mashed up like crunk and, and rock and then you've sort of gone dancey as well. A lot of people don't know how to take Family Force 5 in terms of, yeah, I mean, do, do you feel like you need to be pushing the boundaries? Is that in you guys to do that? Uh, I think with Family Force 5, uh, if we're talking about just the sound, um, it just kind of comes out this way. We've never been like, hey, this is, I want to be hardcore and electronica <laughs> and all of this. It's just, it's a bunch of stuff that we really like and uh, we kind of throw it in a pot and mix it all together. And I think there's some bands that can pull that off and some bands we've seen that are, I guess, somewhat kind of like us and they can't pull it off at all. So, um, yeah, it's, it's hard to categorize, but uh, I, everybody, I, I think, knows that it's very fun music. So, the first disconnect between me and understanding Family Force 5 I've had all these years, which I now realize, is that they are super rooted in, like, real deal Christian music. Like I said, I'm not Christian, I've never been religious, I've never gone, <laughs> never in my life did I ever go down the rabbit hole of, like, Christian music. Besides, like, the Christian Warp Tour bands, like Under Oath or all that sort of Christcore stuff, but those bands were, you know, more often still rooted in secular punk and alternative, making their vibe, like, familiar to me. There's enough of common ground. Family Force 5, it's a little different. So three members of Family Force 5 are brothers, uh, and those brothers' dad, that's right, we're going all the way back to their dad, is a guy named Jerome Olds, uh, a Christian artist who released some soul albums back in the 80s. His uh, first album called You Lift Me Up, with a <laughs> very awesome, campy, unintentionally funny album cover, uh, released in 1980, uh, is actually pretty good. It's some decent, like, old-school, blue-eyed soul, like, rootsy kind of stuff. I like it. You chased all lots of times away I'm glad that I can say I'm spending my life with you Cause you lift me up You lift me up You lift me up He had a
had a little period of inactivity before uh, returning in the later 80s uh, and put out a few more albums. Uh, his work in the late 80s uh, isn't as good. It's kind of really cheesy sounding, like super dated 80s, like Casio keyboard, primitive cheese. Uh, you know, if you want to hear an example, take a listen to the track, Dying to See Jesus in Me. <laughs> though you start to i start to connect the dots here because like this song by their dad jerome olds back in the 80s this is like peppy christian dance pop music right which is kind of <laughs> what family force five became anyways so jerome olds uh had three kids three boys jacob olds joshua olds and solomon olds those are all biblical names. Uh, and when the three brothers were all around middle school age in the mid 90s, they started uh, what, you know, what would be referred to now as essentially a boy band called The Brothers. They rapped and they had dance routines and <laughs> like choreographed dance moves and they were rapping uh, and it sounded like 90s kind of like r&b and pop and hip-hop music like contemporary stuff at the time <laughs> this is very bizarre And yeah, the brothers were Christian as heck, even way more Christian than Family Force 5 would become in their music. You know, these were some 12-year-olds rapping about the, the good grace of God <laughs> it's, and doing synchronized dance routines. It's total madness. You couldn't make this up. Can, they, can, can I talk to these guys? Let's do it. Well, hook. okay, now let's, let's find out names first of all. Your name is? Joshua. Josh. Solomon. Solomon. Jacob. Where have I heard those names before? <laughs> Joshua, Solomon, and Jacob. Good names from the Old Testament, huh? How long have you been singing together now? Oh, we've been serious about this thing for about two years. Really? Uh, we've been really praying hard, and we feel that Jesus has uh, really pushed us towards the mission. Well, hey, I, I think that's great. How old are you guys? Do you mind telling me? In three days, I'll be 13. Three days, you'll be 13, huh? <laughs> It's also awesome. It's bizarre, but it's awesome. Just like Family Force 5. Before you guys were a popular rock band, you guys were a Christian boy band. What made you switch your uh, music? Oh, we had a band when we were kids, and uh, we did stuff that was it was really cool at the time. It was like Belle Biv DeVoe. I mean, no one knows who that is, but that's <laughs> yeah. what it was like. And awesome. it was, yeah, it was really cool, and, uh, and, we, uh, and we danced around and stuff, and we still do that to this day. So I guess we're still a boy band. Except it's a man the band three now. Bros, three brethren. Band. It's a man the boy Blood band. It's a band. The brothers olds. It's a man brothers band. Old. So <laughs> this here is where my like second disconnect between myself and understanding Family Force 5 for all these years comes into play. Family Force 5, they don't come from roots of being uh, like a guitar-based punk or alternative band. They come from roots of being a singing, rapping, dancing, you know, entertainment unit, essentially. I realize that Family Force 5 uh, really are kind of a grown-up version of their original group, The Brothers, and it contextualized for me uh, that Family Force 5 are kind of more easily comparable to, like, the Blue Man group. <laughs> <laughs> more so than they are to like fallout boy you know what i mean either way you know the brothers were legit they were a real group uh and around 94 and 95 they took it seriously they performed uh the brothers released two albums the first of which uh seemingly the more landmark one the more iconic one in my research in 1994 uh which was entitled fact and reality which was released on star song records uh a label who had also released their father's albums now there was a second album in 1995 called rpm and this one's super rare i, I can't find the music for this one anywhere, but according to Discogs, it's uh, apparently more of a folky country kind of guitar-based sound. 
sounds cool. <laughs> Step into a different direction. Uh, after that, in 1996, uh, they retired their The Brothers moniker and started a new group called Ground Noise. So I wanted to take it to the brothers themselves uh, to describe uh, sort of this period for us from their own words a little bit. Um, they said the following about that group and also a little bit about the brothers and their that transition from all that into Family Force 5 in an interview with the website Jesus Freak Hideout. <laughs> Quote, musically, we had this band called Ground Noise. Ground Noise was a crouton. Boo! Laughter. <laughs> Ground Noise was kind of a fatty third day. Yes, kind of like third day, but not. Like a very, very bad version of third day. So this is, again, this is how, uh, just a side note, this is how like rooted in like real Christian music that they are, which uh, leads to the disconnect between me and understanding this band, because I had to Google, I, I've ne I'd never heard of Third Day, I had to look look up who that is, and that's like some 90s Christian group, uh, a 90s Christian southern rock band, uh, and the band name is a reference to the biblical accounts of the, re the resurrection of Jesus on the third day uh, following his crucifixion. You know, this is super deep into that rabbit hole, which I've never been aware of. Anyway, back to the, the interview quote. So they're talking about their band Ground Noise. It was kind of southern rock, and it was something that was kind of pushed on us, and we just didn't want to do it, and we finally ended up doing things. Family Force 5. In between there, we went to school a couple years, met Nay Daddy, did the college thing. Nay Daddy was in a band called Blue Collar Server. We worked at a jewelry store, worked at a big church, and ran sound there. Not kind of cool stuff. Lots of fried chicken was eaten in that period. Fatty. We never gave up fried chicken. We gave up music for a while. Yeah, couple of relationships didn't work out, wasted a lot of time. Lots of painful stuff between the brothers and Family Force 5. Then we hit <laughs> puberty, and we were like, all right, let's be rebellious and grow out our hair long and talk back to mom and dad. It was definitely a growing period. We had to find ourselves and find out who we were in music, and that's what we did. You got a style in the south when you step in there. Put a gold tooth in your mouth, look at you now. Take off your ball cap and think of all that, but you're looking like Scott Stout. You just another red nickel back in the woods. Not a quarter gin on me, nigga, bring the gas, come on. So, for a band as unique and as singular as Family Force 5, taking a look into their history has been essential for me to uh, properly make sense of their whole shtick. I mean, do you guys know what I mean about how, you know, their whole history is really so important to contextualizing this band to, like, make it make sense? It's pretty cool, like, I, I actually really love how they were able to retain all of these different musical phases that they went through, um, and inspirations from, like, their hometown, and just the way that they grew up, um, and ended up combining it all into one, albeit confusing, uh, but surprisingly cohesive package. <laughs> you know, you start off with the Christian 80s soul music father, that's kind of where it all begins, uh, the brothers come along and they update what their dad was doing into early 90s, uh, you know, singing, synchronized dancing, R&B, hip-hop, entertainment unit, boy band. Uh, in their project after that, they picked up some rootsy southern rock along the way, uh, and once Family Force 5 got going in the early 2000s, they took all that, added a little new metal, <laughs> a little bit of Smash Mouth-esque fucking radio pop rock and because they were from Atlanta they were from the south in Atlanta where at the time artists like Lil Jon and the Yin Yang Twins were fucking coming up and introducing the world to crunk music Family Force 5 added crunk into their sound as well which also explains the rap nicknames it explains crouton <laughs> the house, geez, 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 the house, 
And see, that was a fucking mouthful. It's so confusing that you have to look into the history to really make sense of it all. At least I had to. Anyways, before I get too ahead of myself, now that we've... Now that we've contextualized Family Force 5, uh, let's go through a bit of their history, run through their discography. I mostly want to uh, kind of get into their first album, because uh, that's the one that I've been really into. But, um, you know, let's see what their trajectory was all about real quick, and then I'll, I'll get out of your hair. Uh, so interestingly enough, Family Force 5, when they formed in 2004, they were originally called The Family, spelled with a P-H. The P-H... Family. We're now going by nicknames, rap names, goofy alter egos. Uh, Solomon was now Soul Glow Activator, and he was on lead vocals as always. Jacob was now Crouton. Uh, he played drums and sang too. Josh was now Fatty, also with a PH, uh, and he played bass and sang. And they had two new friends who they recruited for the group, uh, Nay Daddy, <laughs> on synthesizer and percussion. And uh, originally they had a guy uh, called 20 Cent on lead guitar, uh, who quickly got replaced by a guy called Chapstick. <laughs> Um, my name is Chapstick because I'm addicted to it. I, uh, it's kind of bad, and when I first joined the band, they, they said I needed a name, and, and so I was like, I don't want a name. And they were like, well, you have to have one, and you're addicted to that stuff, so maybe that should be your name. So first it was Balmy, but Balmy was just not working, so we went with Chapstick. Uh... Well, my name is Fatty. Mine, mine came from being a fat kid, and I've got two brothers in the band, yeah. and That's I just right. kind of grew up. They were calling me Fatty, and I would always kind of cry and go, you know, I know I'm big boned. But the whole... Uh, but he was really fat, though. Yeah, I was really fat. Uh, the, the whole concept behind the names were, uh, we're from Atlanta, and everybody down there has a nickname and like a rapper name, so we kind of started it as a joke, and it caught on. And all of the fans started calling us by the nickname, so it kind of stuck. So uh, to this day, I wish I had a different name, but, you know, what are you going to do, right? Uh, <laughs> under the family moniker, they uh, freaking landed a major label record deal somehow with uh, Maverick Records. Uh, and their deal was also a joint record deal with uh, a Christian label called Goatee Records so that they could market themselves to both the Christian and secular music markets, respectively. Also under the moniker The Family, they recorded and released their first EP, aptly titled The Family EP, in 2004. And after the release of this EP, The Family were faced with having to change their band name due to some legal issues, some copyright issues relating to Prince's band. Yes, Prince, the artist formerly known as Prince. He had a band called The Family, uh, which was spelled with an F, but, you know, they figured there might could be some problems there. So they changed it. Uh, and when Jesus Freak Hideout, <laughs> that interview that I've been quoting, asked... Why the name Family Force 5? Well, Soul Glow Activator said the following, quote, Family Force 5 sounded like a big giant robot, basically. People are like, dude, is there some big spiritual meaning behind it? Fatty, nope, ha ha ha, laughs. Crouton, basically it's a robot, laughter. We're a family, we're a force to be reckoned with, and there's five of us. But I'd say there's a way better description, and it's that it sounded like a big Voltron robot. We feel like Soul Glow Activator, Chapstick, Nay Daddy, Crouton, Fatty. So now it's 2005, they're called Family Force 5 now. I was thinking about it, they should do, it. there should be a tour... That's Family Force 5, Maroon 5, and the Jackson 5. <laughs> and Ben Folds 5. Ooh, I forgot about the... Yeah. There we go. That would be sick. All right. Um, <laughs> what was I talking about? So they're called Family Force 5. Uh, so in 2005, the EP that was released the previous year, the Family EP, gets re-released under the name The Family Force 5 EP. Uh, with all the same songs, all the same recordings, plus an additional new song called Cadillac Funk, 
which that song would also appear on drum roll their debut album business up front party in the back which was finally released on march 21st of 2006 so this album sold fairly well at first it hit number 17 on the u.s christian albums chart that's right and number 12 on the U.S. Heat Seekers chart, which is a Billboard chart that uh, that uh, spe focuses on new up and coming artists. This record, which just I mean, what an al great album title! Business up front, party in the back. I know Family Force Five didn't invent that phrase, but that's a badass name for an album and encapsulates this album perfectly. Um, the record was supported by the lead single "Country Gentleman." Uh, which was released before the album came out, actually, in 2005. And oh, man, this song is a doozy. The opening riff in the beginning, it's like this new metal, like actually kind of heavy riff, which like I can see mosh pits opening up in my mind. But, 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 oh. Before it goes into the main riff, which is a little bit more of a major key kind of... Um, a little like a goofy kind of riff. It sounds like the the theme song of like I don't know like an HGTV show like flipping houses or like or like a show like Pawn Stars or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> then the fucking Beastie Boys esque like. <laughs> in your face like party rap lead vocals come in the first line is um i come from the land where the mullet attacks business up front party in the back it's so fucking sick it's so fun it, and the whole song is just this really goofy fun song about how their mama raised them in the dirty south and they got manners because they're fucking country gentlemen it's awesome the dirty dirty <laughs> south so this song is a pretty good idea, a pretty good uh, display of the wide array of musical styles which come together on this Family Force 5 full length and how, although it's very strange, um, Family Force 5 are actually like really genuinely talented musicians and therefore even though it's uh, like a goofy record a goofy band they 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 pull it off in a way that a less musically talented band simply could not this album the idea of this album a Christian electro like new metal rock rap album would be terrible if it was done by a band who didn't know what they were doing musically but family force five pulled it off not an easy feat so the next single from the album was love addict uh which was kind of like well first of all this was like the biggest song when when i was first hearing a family force five back in 07 08 this was like their big song uh this one has the crunk element but it's also like a southern rock it's like a crunk southern rock song This one, again, has like a new metal riff for the main riff. It's sort of heavy, but again, on this one, they really dial up the crunk, the party rock, the club vibe. So this is important um, because, believe it or not, Family Force 5 did, in interviews at this time, describe their sound as crunk rock. They wore the crunk label, the crunk association with pride. Now, the Wikipedia page for uh, the Business Up Front Party in the Back album lists its genres as new metal, rap rock, rap metal, 
and crunk core. So here's the, here's the thing. I wanted to say something about this. I have two problems with this. <laughs> For one thing, this is not crunk core. This album, this is not crunk core. Family Force 5, not crunk core. Here's the thing. I consider myself a PhD in crunk core. I do. Um, and crunk core did not exist until Broken Side came along in about 2007, 2008. Crunk core has a very specific sound. Family Force 5, it's just not that sound. Look, yeah, they had an obvious, like, Atlanta Lil John influence. Yeah, they were a little heavy in some places. The singer does do a little bit of a scream-type vocal in other places. Maybe you could say it's like a precursor to crunk core or something, but... If I were editing the genre section on Wikipedia for this album, I would just put crunk. I wouldn't, I don't consider this crunk core, you know? Crunk core, you gotta have, it's gotta be like a rap beat the whole time. It's gotta have, I don't know, there's a certain, there's a certain vibe and aesthetic going on with crunk core that I just wouldn't put this album under that label. <laughs> this is very important to me, clearly. Uh, also, if I were editing the genre section on Wikipedia for this album, I would also add either pop rock or alternative rock, because if you go deeper into the album on the track list, check this out. I'm going to quote something interesting from that same Jesus Freak hideout interview uh, that I've been pulling from. Check this out. Quote, We had to find ourselves and find out who we were in music, and that's what we did. The song Peachy is the very first song we ever had that sounded like this different music that we do. This thing that we call crunk punk or crunk rock or whatever you want to describe it as. But that's how we discovered it. We wrote that song Peachy and we're like, man, this sounds different. We should do something like this all the time instead of this bad <laughs> version of third day music that we have. It ended up being something that we all absolutely love because we love anything that's very beat oriented and very rhythmic and it just happens to be awesome. So if you listen to the song Peachy, it's a much more like positive pop rock, very early 2000s, almost like a Smash Mouth-esque alternative like sunshiny radio rock track it's also kind of similar to the vibe of like i'm getting hints of like i'm getting notes of the song your own worst enemy by lit you know what i mean it's like that kind of feel so that vibe, that like radio pop rock kind of vibe, uh, was the first like experimental starting point for Family Force 5. And you can tell because Peachy really does sound a bit different from the other songs on the album. Uh, another song on the record which kind of sticks out as something different and possibly another example of Family Force 5 initially trying to find their sound is the song Replace Me. This one is the most, like, 2004 emo that I've ever heard Family Force 5 get. Certainly the most emo-sounding song on this album. It kind of sounds like they got together in, like, their jam room, and they were, like, someone was bumping the used that day, and were like, hey, we should write something that sounds like the used, or, or something like that. It's really good. It, it, believe it or not, it even has some, like... Almost uh, every time I die, sounding uh, like like heavy southern riffs on it, like all like vaguely hardcore style riffs. It's really cool. I like this song a lot. Definitely one of my favorites on this album. And this song, uh, Replace Me, is proof that if Family Force 5 wanted to, they could have been a more quote-unquote serious act, or uh, they could have even been just a really good contemporary emo band at the time if they wanted to. They could have been, but they just 
They just chose to be super goofy. <laughs> and you know, I say that they chose to be super goofy, but what they really chose to be, and this is like the thing that has really drawn me to this album, something that I've realized about this album and has made me love it and love this band, is that it's not that they chose to be goofy. If you, if you really look at it, they chose to be themselves and have fun doing what they fucking do what makes them unique you know what i mean and what makes them different like looking into their history i think it's so important because they're a band that they they didn't want to like you know they didn't just become an emo band because it was like popular and trendy at the time or, or like conform to you know any one specific sound that was popular in 2005 or 2006 they took all of their own unique influences and stuff they grew up on and stuff, uh, you know, that was popular in Atlanta where they came from. And obviously they grew up with the whole Christian thing. So there's stuff with that. And they kind of just put everything that they liked into a blender, whether it was looked at as cool by like real music critics or not. You know what I mean? Like they like to dance and rap and have a good time. And they just chose to be themselves and, 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 you know, kind of, kind of do really just do what they loved, you know, at a time in music, I feel like back in the two thousands, things were, you know, I feel like it, it was maybe could have been a little hard to be yourself at the time because to, to, or, or like to do something as unique and different as family force five were doing. Cause in this day and age in 2024, you know, uh, it, it's almost, uh, like encouraged and commonplace for artists to blend different, genres of music together, you know, like Post Malone or, or you know, tons of artists that kind of just do a little bit of everything. But at the time, you know, music was really segregated by genre and by style and Family Force 5 were really ahead of the curve in terms of like just combining all this different stuff that they loved. And in turn, you know, what I love about Family Force 5 is that they they really embrace just being yourself and and you know, even if it might look corny to somebody else or or might not be understood by me for many, like I didn't get Family Force 5 for years, but now that I've peeled back the onion, I'm like, oh, you know, this is just about embracing what makes you unique and what makes you fucking you, you know, what makes you special, not to, you know, sound super corny or whatever, but that's kind of like, that's kind of the message and the spirit that I get from this album business up front party in the back that makes me really like really stoked on it and really like appreciate it a lot so anyways i don't want this video to get super long and i mostly wanted to focus on like the history of family force five and me kind of discovering them recently and figuring out what makes them tick and you know kind of talk about their first album which is the one that is definitely my personal favorite and um you know the one that i uh have been really liking the most but um, before I close out the video, I will kind of do like a quick, let's just quickly look at the kind of the rest of Family Force Five's career, um, and kind of see what happened after this first album. So they put out the first album, uh, Love Addict does become kind of a minor hit on like Christian radio. Um, they start picking up steam and they start doing both like tours like Warp Tour and kind of the more secular alternative punk world and touring with some scene bands like Forever the Sickest Kids and stuff. But they were also playing, you know, Christian festivals like uh, Creation Festival and you know, things like that. Winter Jam. I've, I don't actually know much about these Christian festivals, but this is just like what I've read. They put out a second record in uh, August of 2008 called Dance or Die. So for this one, they are no longer on the major label Maverick or the uh, Christian label Goatee that they were on on the first record. Uh, they signed a new deal with Tooth and Nail Records, which is a... Uh, a uh, very infamous, like classic uh, record label, kind of, uh, it is a Christian label, but it is in the punk and uh, alternative scene. It's put out a ton of, 
a ton of stuff that I, I people who watch this channel and myself love. Uh, you know, Under Oath, Devil Wears Prada, MXPX, Emery, Norma Jean, The Almost, Anne Berlin, a ton of stuff like that. Uh, great record label, Copeland. So they're on Tooth and Nail now. They put out Dance or Die, their second album. This is their highest charting album. It charted at number 30 on the Billboard 200. That's like the main Billboard chart, so that's pretty big. Um, Dance or Die, I do like this album. I don't listen to it as much as the first one. It's not on Spotify for some reason. Um, but it's kind of a, it's a little bit of a different sound from the first one. They kind of took out the new metal, like rock influence and it's more of like uh it's more dance pop and electro it's it's almost more like black eyed peas or something like that but they still retained some of the eclectic style uh that they were known for on the first album like there's still some like screaming here and there and like and like oddball moves thrown in there but this album's cool some really good songwriting on it They were doing a bunch of tours, you know, touring the crap out of the world. And uh, they put out a third record in 2011. Like I said, I'm kind of breezing through the rest of this because I mostly wanted to talk about the first record and the, the history, but they're the early history. But 2011, they put out the third record. This one is just called Three, Roman numerals, Three. And uh, also released on Tooth and Nail. A little bit of a dip on the Billboard charts here. Hit number 61 on the Billboard 200. Not too shabby, but, you know, a bit 30 less from Dance or Die. Um, this album, I actually... I, it has... I don't know. This album is kind of where they start to lose me a little bit. Um, there are some, like, individual songs that I like a lot. Um, the song Paycheck is a lot of fun. Can You Feel It is a really cool intro to the album uh and the song wobble i also like those are the first three tracks on the album but wobble is cool it's like this dance track about a dance they created called the wobble and the whole song is like do the wobble it's kind of like the macarena But the rest of the album, I don't know, kind of falls a little flat for me. And on this one, it's kind of, uh, it was put out in 2011. And the, the sound is kind of reflective of a lot of the uh, contemporary pop that was going on around 2010, 2011. Like kind of that, like, there's kind of a lot of that, like, reggae island kind of feel that was popping off on on songs like um, like Billionaire by Travi McCoy or, uh, uh, you know, Beautiful Girls, Sean Kingston. Uh, that iPod song by Iaz, um, you know, that kind of like, or like Love Like Woe by The Ready Set, like kind of that island feel that was <laughs> like popping in the mainstream. It's kind of reminiscent of that or other like pop rap from 2010, 2011. Oh, I, I, I. This Family Force 5 album, it's fine. It's not bad. After this record, uh, a big change happened in the world of Family Force 5, and one of the brothers, Solomon, a.k.a. Soul Glow Activator, the lead singer of the band, left the group. And, um, you know, which was kind of a, you know, it kind of looked, uh, kind of a blow to uh, Family Force 5, you know, kind of a bummer. He was a big part of, of the band, obviously, um, and but Crouton, the drummer, and one of the other brothers, uh, ended up switching from drums to lead vocals. So it's kind of like weird because such a big original identity of the band is missing. But I actually really like Crouton, low key. No offense to anyone else in Family Force 5, but Crouton is low key my favorite member. <laughs> I really like this guy. I just think he's really funny and just like a cute little guy. <laughs> Not to be weird, but I just, I like him. I think he's cool. And he made a really good front man, actually. It was actually really fun because I, I was singing anyway when I played on the kit. Um, and, you know, I always say that 
the only reason why I got the job to play drums is because I could sing at the same time. So it's 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 been fun, and I think I'm a better dancer than a sing. I mean, a better dancer than I am a drummer. So so it's been it's 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 been really fun. It's it's been a really cool transition. He um he didn't his voice his singing voice was a little different from Soul Glow Activators. Soul Glow had more of a like rough kind of raspy tone. Uh, Crouton was more like smooth vocals. Um, but he was a really good dancer and uh, around this time. So they put out um, what has t t up to now ended up being the final Family Force 5 record called Time Stand Still uh, in August of 2014. This one, they are not on uh, Tooth and Nail anymore. They signed to a Christian label called Word Records. And um, weirdly enough, this album... Like, you would almost expect it to not do very well, but this album is, like, weirdly really successful for some reason. It hit number 30 on the Billboard 200, so they jumped back up to number 30 on the chart. And um, so this album I'm not really as into musically. It's kind of like they went into this direction of being, like, a Christian EDM group. Or, like, <laughs> it's like Christian EDM or like Christian, uh, like if LMFAO were Christian or something like that, it's kind of, it's a little bit like not for me. I'm not really the target audience for that, but for what it is, I think they actually did a surprisingly really good job on this album. I do like the song BZRK a lot. That one's a lot of fun. Um, Berserk. <laughs> And the, uh, uh, something of note, there is a song called Walk on Water on this album, which is a straight up uh, Christian song, Christian lyrics, Christian vibe, which I think is the, I could be wrong, but I think it's the only like straight up, like bluntly the Christian song that Family Force 5 did. Um, so that's interesting. <laughs> And yeah, this album surprisingly really successful. If you look at uh, their Spotify top songs, like most of them are from this album. And they did a single called Chainsaw around this time with uh, some Christian rapper called Tedashi, which is like their big, that, that was like a really big song. <laughs> it's like their number one song on Spotify. Um, so I don't know how or why exactly, but they really kind of had this like resurgence or this rejuvenation around this time with Crouton on lead vocals. So unfortunately, uh, after touring on the Time Stand Still album for a couple years, uh, around 2016, 2017, Chapstick, as well as Nay Daddy, ended up leaving the group. You know, they're all getting a little older. It's, you know, time to settle down and, you know, the wives and the kids and all that. I get it. Um, in 2018, it appears that there was a brief period where the two remaining brothers, Crouton and Fatty, Jacob and Josh, uh, tried to kind of rebrand Family Force 5. They changed the name to FF5, put out some music, and we're talking about a new album coming soon, but it seems like it just kind of fizzled out. Again, I feel like, you know, maybe something business-wise happened, something, you know, wasn't working out or the, the, the vibe wasn't right or maybe they also just decided that you know maybe it's time to get off the road and live a life at home who knows you know they, they haven't officially broken up or anything officially they're on hiatus but you know there has been no as far as i know no activity in the ff5 camp since then but their instagram bio reads good things come to those who wait so I don't know. I don't know, man. I mean, here I am stirring the pot right now. I'm throwing the name Family Force 5 out there. Hey, Family Force 5, freaking let's let's get the band back together, dudes. Come on. We need some love addict action. If there's anybody who needs love, it's all of us Family Force 5 fans, of which I am now one. So anyways, guys, that's 
pretty much it. I'm going to cut it off there. That's the story of Family Force 5. You know, how I got into them recently. I thought their backstory, their history was really interesting. And I can't recommend that first album enough. Business Up Front Party in the Back. It is really goofy, um, but it's really cool. It's kind of like uh, a precursor to, you know, artists like 303 and uh, uh, LMFAO and stuff like that that ended up getting really popular later. Um, and it's, it's, in my opinion, still a really like forward thinking, progressive album, even now, almost 20 years later, like it still sounds really like ahead of a, a bunch of different curves. I don't know when you throw that many different genres that theoretically shouldn't <laughs> work together together and it works to me that's always the most futuristic sounding music and and just again like i was saying the vibe of this album is so fun it makes you feel good it makes you want to be yourself you know it's like them feeling good and being themselves and it makes you want to feel good and be yourself and i don't know it just got such a positive fun outlook to it that i love so i don't know go family force five y'all rock um if you want to support this channel further and you want some bonus content from me and you want your name <laughs> in these videos, check out my Patreon. There's a link in the description. Thank you to all these people on the screen who uh, support that. It means a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in to the Cozy Representative. And uh, yeah, I will catch you next time. I love you. Thank you. Goodbye.